In Nepal, a 10-year civil war between government forces and Maoists ended in 2006. In 2004, at the height of the conflict, the UN reported that Nepal had the highest number of disappearances in the world. Today, over 1,300 people remain disappeared. Not one person has been prosecuted for these and other grave human rights abuses that were committed during the war. My brother was very intelligent, sharp-minded and talented. Best student at his school of his time. Everybody had high hopes that he would achieve great things in life. 8th of October, 2003, Janakpur. Sanjeev Kumar Khan and a group of friends were taken by a joint team of the police and army. Five of them never returned. It is thought that they were shot dead by the security forces and buried by the banks of a river. Sanjeev Kumar Khan and other students wouldn't have gone missing on that day if the country followed the rule of law. The state had taken the law into its hands and was being barbaric towards the people. The state was doing that, so were the Maoists. It happened from both sides of the conflict, but the state is responsible for this particular case. It is well established that Sanjeev Kumar and the other young men were not combatants. They were not soldiers out waging a war. If the state had any faith in the rule of law, if the students had been accused of any crime, the state could have filed legal cases against them. They could have been detained, but they wouldn't have been murdered like this. In November 2006, a peace agreement was signed between the Maoists and the government. Both sides agreed to reveal the fate of those who were disappeared within 60 days. Today, five years later, no answers have been provided no police investigations concluded, and no prosecutions have taken place. The incident did take place, but how do we solve it now? Should we rely only on the justice system to address this incident? Some conflicts must be solved through political consensus so that peace can prevail in society. The government has no clear policy to address incidents from the conflict years, or the government doesn't want to address those incidents. They don't want to prosecute the accused because two very powerful forces are involved. First, the Nepal army, second, the Maoist party. There are agreements saying such crimes should be punished, but I feel there is a tacit agreement to brush everything under the law. Two commissions have been proposed to look into human rights abuses that were committed during the conflict. Some politicians say that there should be no individual criminal prosecutions. Instead, these commissions alone should deal with these grave crimes. This is despite the fact that they will have no power to conduct criminal prosecutions and rulings by the Supreme Court, saying such commissions are no substitute to the criminal justice system. Many fear that political pressure has prevented police from investigating these crimes, that in practice, these commissions may be used to provide amnesty to those who committed grave human rights abuses. When a member of a family is forcefully disappeared, that family is completely destroyed. If our current politicians understood this feeling, if their sons or daughters were taken like my brother was, perhaps then they would understand this experience and be willing to do something about it. Monarchy has been displaced by a republic. That is justice enough. This insistence upon addressing every incident is just an obsessive tendency to split hairs. Now, such a tendency will only help escalate conflict. It is just not possible to address every insignificant detail. We were like this in the past and nothing has really changed today. Whom does this republic serve? Perhaps Nepal is a republic now, but it is for the 601 parliamentarians, for the ministers, not for the rest. Not for us. The Republic is cemented with our blood. It should be a Republic for us first. 
Amnesty International, and families of victims do not consider murder, rape, and all the grave human rights abuses insignificant. Perpetrators should be tried in civilian courts and held accountable by the rule of law. Far from impeding the peace process, prosecutions will in fact strengthen it. Jai Kishore Lab campaigned tirelessly for his son's killers to be prosecuted. Sadly, his efforts took their toll and he died of a heart attack in April 2010. He never saw his son's killers brought to justice.